was in the store. He was very severe with him. He got down pretty much this way. So instead of just watching videos, doing things, I decided maybe I'd try to do something good. I came across all these missing people. They're missing, murdered, maybe, we don't know. One of my definite uh, videos shows a very clear picture of a young man robbing a store and murdering the, the person that was working for no reason at all in the back of the head. I'm hoping that when one of these videos will be seen by somebody and they'll contact the police and let somebody know who these people are, maybe where they are. Two of them, they don't know where, if they're dead or alive. And I'm hoping that we can find closure for these families. Thank you very much for your time. And please hit subscribe because I will be putting on more videos. Thank you. My first story concerns John Andrew A-A-R-L-I-E. He has been missing since July 15th, 2011 from Yakima, Y-A-K-I-M-A, -A, Washington. He was born March 2nd, 1959. He's 52 years old, weighs five, 170 pounds, and is 5'10". He was wearing a watch and was hospitalized a week before his disappearance. He may be in need of medical attention. He's a Caucasian male with brown hair, brown eyes, and his nickname is Andy. He is an eight inch scar on his left leg, a five inch scar on his left arm, and a scar on his chest. He was taken to the, the hospital in Yakima, Washington, by emergency services on July 7th, 2011. He was last heard from on July 16th when he had phone contact with his sister. He's never been heard from since. Few details are available, but if you can call the Quincy, Washington Police at 509-787-4718, they would be greatly appreciate the time. Thank you very much. The second story is a very sad story. This happened on, on no, November of 2001. An, an unidentified man walked into a liquor store named 7th and 70 in Terre Haute, Indiana. He got some beer from the freezer, then pointed a gun at Billy Bronsman, the clerk. After receiving all the cash in the register, he told Brosman to walk to the back of the store. As Brosman was walking, the man shot him once in the head, killing him instantly. Now, there's a very good picture here. And if anybody knows this man, I'm sure they'll recognize him. This is just one of the cases where the offender can be seen so clearly. He's a white male six feet tall, between 30 and 40, with a receding hairline. The belief is that he probably changed his appearance drastically so that the camera footage would not be of any use. But he really is easy to spot, as you can see. The scary thing about this case is it's not only that this one man is murdered, to kill a man over something as a small amount I, and I think he left his beer, shown that it's probably a thrill kill for this guy. He may have even done it before, and he may be in prison for another. A suspect in 2001 homicide is the focus of a renewed search for the shooter of Billy Brosman. A $5,000 reward 
is being offered for information that solves the shooting death of Brosman, who was a clerk at the store. Brosman was shot in the head after being robbed at 6.30 p.m. on November 30, 2001. In the store at 2701 Crane Town Road, police described the man as five foot eight to six feet tall, medium build, thinning hair. Please call Captain Tompkins at the Terre Haute Police Department at 812-244-2207 or call Crime Stoppers at 800-238-7867. And ju they just haven't identified him yet. And it's such a sad story. The third case involves a lady named Stephanie D. Welch. She has been missing from Lakin, Kansas since February 28, 2001 at around 9 a.m. She was 23 at the time, is now 42. She's 5 foot 8 and 190 pounds with brown hair and, and blue eyes. They the authorities believe that she did make it home and was packing because she was planning on moving in with her boyfriend. She was engaged to Ray Moore and was driving a silver Mazda 1990. The car was found abandoned at another mobile park at the south end at around 11 a.m. Witnesses saw a man dressed in black walk away from the car. The authorities didn't believe that she knew anyone in the trailer park, and they found her clothing and $800 cash on the front seat. There, there was snow and mud on the tires and indications that the car had been driven a long distance. Unfortunately, the police believe she was murdered sometime between the time she dropped off her child and the car was found abandoned. There are a lot of abandoned wells in the area, and they have been unsuccessful in finding any evidence. She's Caucasian female, brown hair, blue eyes, and had tattoos on her back and right breast. She had a scar on her left buttock and a scar on her right elbow, and her navel is pierced. She may use the name Peterson, and some agencies spell her name S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E. Stephanie was in the process of divorcing her husband, Brian Welch, at the time of her disappearance. He has since been awarded custody of their two sons, and Brian claimed that they were attempting a reconciliation in early 2001. He said that Stephanie did not intend to marry more, although the letter the latter claimed she was planning a June 2001 wedding. Neither Welch nor Moore are considered strong suspects in the case. One of Stephanie's friends was also in the midst of a divorce in 2001, and the friend's estranged husband allegedly threatened Stephanie sometime beforehand. Investigators questioned the individual, but he is not um, involved in, in the case they believe. Stephanie was employed at a cattle processing plant in Lincoln in 2001. Her case was reclassified as a possible homicide in February 2002. Her loved ones stated she would not have willingly ab abandoned her children. There have never been any arrests in connection with her disappearance. If you have any answers, any information, please call 620-355-6211 or 
1-800-273-1817. Thank you for your time. And I hope that if you have any answers or questions, you contact the police immediately. Contact the police and let them know if you have any information at all. It would be greatly appreciated. And please hit the like button. You have a great day.